From the city of Beaky Blinders, Birmingham, England, I would like to introduce you to Paddy Dandar. As the world becomes more automated and the robots take over, it's imperative that we build the right human skills for the future. So pull up a chair, grab a smoser or two, and make yourself very uncomfortable. So folks, I'm continuing the conversation with Christian Espinoza, who is a cybersecurity expert, and he is the author of The Smartest Person in the Room. So uh, somebody who has a lot of experience in cybersecurity. So for this episode, Christian, I'd love to know a bit more about the state of cybersecurity because I see there's huge demands for these skills, which then implies we are having lots of cyber attacks. From your perspective, what are you seeing in terms of how big is the problem when it comes to cybersecurity? I think the problem is a massive problem problem. And I think the problem is not related to a lack of technology or lack of frameworks. There's plenty of those in cybersecurity. I think it's related to the people in the industry and two aspects of that. One is the people have that have super high IQs that are really good at their job, but have difficulty communicating with other people because they lack EQ or emotional intelligence. I think that is a root issue. And then I think the other issue is, like you mentioned, there's this you know skills gap, they like to say, we need all these people with certain credentials. So a lot of people are attracted to the industry because they know they can make a lot of money, but they don't really care that much about the industry. They're not passionate. They just know that this is a career where they'll have a stable job and they'll always be able to get a job. Whereas the cyber criminals are passionate about they, what they do. There's much more risk for them because if they get caught, they go to jail. This is how they make their living. Whereas on the other side, the defenders often if somebody hacks in the environment there's no risk you know they don't get in trouble really it's just a matter of fact so i think there's a, those are the two factors of why we're not doing poorly in cybersecurity really and if somebody out there was contemplating a career in cybersecurity could you give us an insight into the role what are some of the things that people deal with in this field there's a lot of different things you can do in cybersecurity. And I think it's important because people always say, I want a career in cybersecurity. But my next question is like, what do you actually want to do? Because a career in cybersecurity could be penetration testing, which is ethical hacking, which is a completely different skill set than, let's say, auditing. There's a lot of people in cybersecurity that do auditing. And it's not just a different skill set. It's a different personality because an auditor is a very different type of individual than a penetration tester. They're to two di totally different skill sets. Somebody does digital forensics, very different as well. Somebody looks at works in a security operations center and looks at alerts every day from cyber attacks, different skill sets. So I always recommend people that want to get in cybersecurity understand like what their personality type is and what motivates them. And you could take like a personality test at like 16personalities.com for free to get an idea because if you're easily frustrated, you don't have persistence, and penetration testing is probably not the right thing for you. If you get bored following processes and checklists and auditing is probably not the right thing for you. So it's important to understand like cybersecurity is like, you know, a whole different landscape once you like open the cybersecurity door. And that landscape varies drastically and the skill sets vary drastically in there as well. Oh, great advice there. And I'm just thinking about my kids who are fairly young. My son's 10 and my daughter's 13. So if I wanted them to start to build an interest in the field, what might be some ways that people could actually start getting their children thinking about this field? And whether they do it or not is obviously their choice. But I, I find at the moment, it's not something that is in the mainstream that a lot of kids even think about. Yeah, one of the things that's helped, I believe, attract a lot of people to cybersecurity or at least get to, give them an idea of what it's about, because it's not like the movies. The movies make it seem like you just like press a few keys and you hack into the nuclear facility or the bank and steal the money. It doesn't really work like that. But there's a lot of things called capture the flags where you work often as a team to achieve an objective or get the flag. And that often has like problem solving. Some of the capture the flags are 
about penetration testing, some of them about forensics. So it gives you an idea with a, an objective and a fun way, it's sort of it's gamified to learn some of the cybersecurity skills and figure out how to download a virtual machine and set up a, an environment where you can do hacking against another virtual machine and get your feet wet. I think that's a good way to get people attracted or into cybersecurity in a fun manner. So it's not just esoteric, it's actually tangible. Wow, that's great. I will definitely be checking that out. And in terms of the world we live in today, why is cybersecurity so important? I mean, it probably sounds obvious, but could you just put it into perspective for us? And just in terms of some of the cyber attacks, like could you give some examples of some recent attacks and just the scale of the problem that we have? The problem is escalating. It's gotten much worse. Before, with cybersecurity, the attacks were basically somebody was stealing the data, your data. And that's an inconvenience for the person because if their medical records are stolen and their identification is stolen, they have to prove it back and they may not get the right health care. So there's more of an inconvenient factor, but we've taken it to the next level where the attacks have become more tangible now, like attacks on pipelines, attacks on you know facilities that provide critical infrastructure. That can cause you know, detrimental physical effects, not just your identity being stolen. And if somebody doesn't have gasoline, for instance, it's in the middle of the winter, then they may not be able to heat their house. They may, you know, die from the cold. And one of the things that I focused on in my company was medical devices, because there's a lot of advances in healthcare. And with those advances come new technologies. A lot of those new technologies are vulnerable to cyber attacks. So now you have a landscape where the average person that's in a hospital has 14 devices that are connected to them or helping them at some point that are all connected to the internet in some capacity. A lot of those devices are hackable. So if a cyber criminal really wanted to do something nefarious, they could hack into someone's like drug infusion pump, as an example, and increase the flow rate if that person's on morphine, for instance, and they could kill the patient. They could do a ransomware attack on a hospital and delay the intake of somebody that arrives in an ambulance. And that up dying and there's been a lot of, there's been cases of these things but I, I think we're evolving to a world where cyber is no longer just affecting the virtual world it's starting to affect the physical world in a way that a lot of people haven't comprehended quite yet and just looking into the future what are some of the things we should be caring about what are some of the new developments or opportunities for hackers that are around the corner I think the opportunities for hackers are the all the IOT or IOMT, like the Internet of Medical Things or the Internet of Things devices, like in your TV, I mean, in your house, you've got a television that's connected to the Internet. A lot of televisions, some of them have a camera on it. So somebody can hack into your TV and turn on the mic on your TV and listen to what's going on in your house. You know, we wear a lot of wearable devices. We have implants. All those things connect somehow to something on the Internet. So even like pacemakers have been compromised. Wearable watches have been compromised. And you think, well, this doesn't, this data really doesn't mean anything. But if someone can get an idea of where you are from a GPS perspective and, measure, and get your heart rate data and all that data, they can use that for some purpose that will not serve you, basically. So there's a lot of, as we add more and more things that are easily connected, it increases the exposure that we have in ways that we may not have thought of before. Oh. Thank you so much, Christian. I know we're short on time and we're just about at the end of this episode, but I really do appreciate your insights. I've certainly learned a huge amount. I'm going to give you the last word just to wrap up this particular episode. I think the important thing in cybersecurity is it's about reducing risk, not eliminating risk. You know, like if I skydive, for instance, I, I want to have a backup parachute, be trained. With cybersecurity, we can't eliminate all the risk. It's about reducing the risk to a level that we find acceptable. And I think we, once we understand that concept, we'll approach it differently because I think a lot of people think we're supposed to eliminate all the risk. So yeah, it's about reducing that risk to a level we find okay. There you have it, folks. It's the end of another insightful episode. And as always, thank you so much for sticking around to listen to this episode and for helping support me and encouraging me to create more content for you guys. If you'd like to get in touch with me directly, you'll find my email address in the show notes or equally head over to the website and click on the contact link. And I promise I will respond to every single message I receive. I'm always looking for your feedback. So if you'd like me to change things up or improve things, 
I would love your opinions. If there are topics that you would like us to do future episodes on, or there are other great speakers that you are aware of, then please do mention them and uh, we'll see if we can make it happen. Thank you once again.